Last year, I spent $2,000 on Red Bull. I've had two to three cans a day since I was in eighth grade, and that adds up. So I wanted to know, are these things really as bad for me as everybody says? A study by Nutrition Journal shows that over half of college students have at least one can a month. And that's usually for things like lack of sleep, to increase energy, or to mix with alcohol while partying. <laughs> so for our purposes, I want to focus on Red Bull, since the most studies have been done with it. And I want to focus on its effects on adults, so not children or pregnant women or anything like that. So in order to understand the effects of Red Bull, you have to understand their contents. One of the major contents they focus on is called taurine. Now, this morning I had a funny interaction with a girl who came up and was like, Did you know that taurine is actually an extract of bull semen? <laughs> and that's a common myth that actually a lot of people believe, and it's not true. Taurine is, I'm sorry, <laughs> taurine is an amino acid that's found naturally in your body. The funny thing about taurine, however, is that it actually has no effect on you. When you ingest taurine orally, the taurine levels in your brain don't change at all. So putting it in Red Bull has no effect, but they still focus on it as one of their major advertisements. The European Safety Administration, however, did a test with taurine, and it's completely safe for ingestion, so it's not hurting you either. Now, most effects of Red Bull are the result of other ingredients. The one you're probably most familiar with is caffeine. Maybe Jenna knows a little bit about that. <laughs> so your caffeine affects your body. A study called The Effects of Red Bull on Human Performance and Moods showed that one can of Red Bull does increase your aerobic and anaerobic performance. So Red Bull lives up to its claim. However, it also claims to increase vigilance, concentration, and reaction speed. Are these claims valid? Yes, actually, it's an overwhelming yes. A study at Northumbria University confirmed this five times in a double-blind placebo-controlled study and confirmed that this is actually the result of a guarana and ginseng combination. These are two other ingredients in Red Bull, um, both plant ingredients. So caffeine is not the only thing in Red Bull that can affect you. However, guarana and ginseng can affect you as well. So they have positive effects on you, but you always hear Red Bull so bad for you, energy drinks are bad for you. And there's a little bit of credibility to that statement. Red Bull has the same caffeine content as about one cup of coffee. The smaller can has about 80 milligrams of caffeine. 12 ounce can has 120. If you've ever heard of Spike, it's an extremely potent energy drink that has 300 milligrams of caffeine per serving. So if you ever drink it, it affects you at a faster rate and you'll get to see the signs of caffeine intoxication sooner. A study shows that under 400 milligrams a day over long term has no adverse effects. This is a study published by Health Canada. So if you keep under that at a responsible amount, you probably won't experience some of the more adverse effects. However, if you've had any sort of caffeine above 400 milligrams, you're probably aware of what caffeine intoxication is. These are some of the symptoms of caffeine intoxication, including restlessness, nervousness, excitement, insomnia, flushed face, increased urination, gastrointestinal disturbances, muscle twitching, talking or thinking in a rambling matter, disturbances of heart rhythm, and exhaustibility, and psychomotor agitation. <laughs> Finding the exact level at which this happens is a little bit difficult because of different people have different sensitivities or tolerances to caffeine that they build up over time. Over the short term, it can have some effects on you as well. If you, if you take more than 600 milligrams of caffeine, you can develop things like peptic ulcers, which are not fine, gastrointestinal problems, and headaches, which some of you might have had. Headaches, however, are more of a long-term discussion, because long-term, you start getting an addiction to caffeine, and withdrawals will have a headache. So to overdose on caffeine, you would have to have 125 cans of Red Bull. That's 10 grams before you wouldn't experience things like seizures or death. Long term, you have things like addiction, caffeine-induced anxiety disorder, and insomnia because it disturbs your sleep. The other concern in caffeine is sugar, which you have <coughs> about 12 teaspoons of sugar in a can of Rockstar. So that's you know, a problem when you consider dental things and obesity. You have a sugar-free alternative, but that contains things like aspartame. So there's positive and negative consequences of Red Bull, and it depends on the individual of their uses. Mostly in responsible moderation, it's okay. So healthy or not, Red Bull might not give you wings, but if you've been watching the news lately, you'll find out that it does help you survive a 24-mile skydive from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Awesome. Um, see, see this PowerPoint? Perfect. Um, it used a lot of images. It didn't have a lot of text, and, but when it used text, it used it simplicity. Simply, wow. <laughs> it used simplicity in the design of the text. So that that is a pitch perfect PowerPoint, Chelsea. Great, great job with that. I was at time. You were at 4:55. <laughs> 4:55. I was a little concerned. I was I like, know, aspartame. I was like, aspartame is not important to talk about right now. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right. Feedback for Chelsea. I like to use like really fast and all the symptoms of caffeine intoxication. I can definitely be like this whole week. I totally just didn't know for this. I was like, we're drunk. you said, when you said that it took 120 cans to overdose on Red Bull, in what time increment do you <laughs> consume? One in one day? Yeah, you'd have 125 oh cans in one day without urination. <laughs> you would have you would, you would, you would, you would, you would, like, even, even if I hooked an IV to my arm, yeah, that's not even the only way to over, There is a way to overdose on caffeine. They sell caffeine pills yeah. that are about, oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, 600. No. So if you took a bunch of caffeine pills, you would, but you would you would overdose on glucuronolactone before you overdosed on caffeine, which is another so ingredient in Red Bull that I didn't get to talk about. <laughs> so what's happening when your heart? Because when you came in earlier, your heart palpitations is the result of caffeine because caffeine constricts your blood vessels. Uh -huh. So when your blood vessels are constricted, you have more blood pressure build up. So your heart is working harder, but it's also getting more blood in faster. So it's it palpitates because it's not at its normal mm. resting rhythm. God, I love biology. Okay.